He's not looking for a sex champion. She's looking for a father. <laughs> this is a shift now. This is kingdom stuff I'm talking about here. So the function of the male, say it. The function of the male is to do what? Father the female. What is father? Source. Listen, look at me. No woman on this planet, I don't care what she sells you. No woman on this planet wants to have to go to work. Let me say it slowly. No woman on this planet, none. I dare them to talk to me. I've been to 87 countries and every woman is the same. They don't want to have to go to work. Why? They're not built to have to support nothing. <laughs> they came to help. <laughs> and so the devil's strategy is to move the man and now the woman got to carry the weight and she's not built to carry the weight so he said I will return the hearts of the fathers back to the children if the foundations be restored where will the righteous even be saved How is the male, the father, the female? Here's the bottom line. The male is the source of seed. Women have no seed. You carry it in your loins right now, four generations, son. Every minute of every day, every male in here is carrying four generations. Right now. So whatever you do, it's being transferred upon your sperms. What you do in secret is never secret. It's generational. <laughs> so your private escapades with the woman that you're not married to is not private. Generations are being impacted by that spirit of adultery. Some of you wonder why you are violent against women or why you are homosexually tendency or why you want to drink alcohol or why you want to take drugs. You wonder why am I like this? Why do I hate women? Why do I want to beat women? Check your father's father's father. Because the sins of the father, never the mother, never the mother, the sins of the fathers, God says, are transferred to the first, second, third, and fourth generation. Nothing that a male does is private. It might be personal, but never private. So every time I'm tempted to sin, I think about my unborn great-grandchildren. God doesn't just want to forgive you. He wants to forgive your righteous seed. You are the source of seed. You are the nourisher of fruit that comes from your seed. You are the source of the female that came out of you. The male is designed to protect the fruit that comes out of them. Therefore, the male determines the quality of the fruit and the tree. Therefore, the male maintains his offspring. Therefore, the male is the source of life. Listen to me, man, and I beg you. You are the key to the whole building. This theme was not given to you haphazardly, Bishop. If we're going to build the communities back in our countries, we got to study what Paul said. Paul said, I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ. 
and the head of woman is man and the head of Christ is God every man who prays with his head covered dishonors his head verse 8 the man did not come from the woman but the woman came from the man Abba Abba no, no I feel anointing coming on me listen Listen, therefore, the woman, all the women that you have in your life, you are supposed to father them. Listen, shh, listen. You are your wife's father. You ever wondered why? All the way back in Abraham time, even today. When you get married, you stand at the altar. She's coming down the aisle with her father. So there are two fathers in the house. One waiting and one bringing. Follow me now. The father who bringing, he going to soon release her to another father. So the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says a man <laughs> leaves his father. But it never says a woman leaves. A woman never leaves. Read the Bible. For this cause should a man leave his father and mother. But the woman never leaves her father. Why? Because she just changes fathers. He turns her over to you and says, Pick up where I left off, son. Keep on fathering my daughter. Pick up where I left off, son. You are the father of your wife. And that's why it's built into you to automatically call your wife baby. Oh, come on, brothers. Be honest now. Clap your hand. Because she is your baby. And that's why it is natural for your wife to finally call you daddy. Come on, scream if you got the revelation. Everybody say Abba. Abba. Tell your neighbor you are Abba. Abba. Tell your neighbor carry the load. Carry the load. Carry the load. Go home and carry the load. You are built for it. Woo. One last point I want to make. And I want to sit down. Sit down quick. Are you getting blessed tonight? Everybody say, my baby, my baby is at home. I'm going home to father her. Clap your hands, all you great albums. Fathers, fathers, do not abuse the children. They protect their children. Fathers provide covering and food and clothes and support and counsel and advice so I saw this in the Bible this is gonna bless you Genesis 2 I want to close with this very important write this down God is now talking to the male he said he said look the Lord God took the male this is very important the books are there please get them all because there's so much I want to tell you a man must read please be a reader shut TV off and read okay Look at me. God took the male and put him in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says. God didn't allow Adam to find Eden. He put him in Eden. Listen to me. This is so important. I did research on the word Eden for 12 years. I wrote a book on it. I discovered the word Eden is made up of five strokes in Hebrew. Look at me. Five strokes. One stroke says spot another stroke says moment another stroke says open door another stroke means access and the final stroke means presence it's interesting the word Eden is five strokes in Hebrew 
It means moment, spot, presence, open door, access. Eden, therefore, is impossible to translate into English. That's why the word Eden is written Eden. The Hebrew word is written Eden in English. Because the word Eden literally means the spot for the moment where the presence of God is open door access to heaven. Look at me again. What is Eden? A spot on the earth for the moment where the presence of God is an open door to heaven. It says God took the man and put him in the spot. So the first place God put the male is in his presence. So the first thing a male needs is not the presence of a woman. He needs the presence of God. The second thing God says, work it and cultivate and guard the garden. And then the Lord commanded the man, don't touch the tree. So here's the bottom line. Write this down. The five purposes of the male. First, number one, Eden. To be a kingdom man, you must be in the presence of God 24 hours a day. Number two, work. God gave man work before he gave him woman. That means you need a job before you get a wife. Number three, God told a man to cultivate. To cultivate means to bring the best out of something. To, bring, to make it fruitful. Therefore, God will never give a male a finished product. Oh, it's going to get heavy now. You were designed to be a cultivator. So God will not give you anything you don't have to cultivate. So God never gave Adam a chair or a table. He hid them in the trees. God never gave Adam a pair of shoes. He hid it in the cow. Okay, here's the good part. God will never give a male a finished woman. This is very important now. The woman that you are looking for, the one in your head, does not exist. That's why you can't find the perfect woman. She only exists in your mind. God will only give you the raw material. He said, I want you to cultivate her and make her into the woman in your mind. So your job is to develop and to refine and to train and to educate and to improve the woman in your life. That means the longer a woman stays with you, the better she should become. If you are ashamed of your wife, you should be ashamed of yours. Oh, come on, men, go with me now. Getting ready to go home now. Therefore, you must be just like your hero, Jesus. The Bible says he has a woman. Her name is Ecclesia. He says, you love your wife like I love my wife. How? I wash her. I cleanse her. I remove every spot, every wrinkle, every blemish, every stain. And then I present her to myself. And I say, look at I did. That's mine. That's my thing. He says, you're supposed to feel proud of your wife. You're supposed to make her what you wanted her to become, become the woman she was born to be.